Georgia is at a crossroads again. Two forces pulling Georgia in the direction of Russia and Europe, with president and government at loggerheads. We've seen the tensions spill out onto the streets, but will this be a possible solution? So, are elections the only way to decide? Do join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. After nearly nine years of steadily rising unemployment, corruption and one Russo-Georgian war to boot, the people of Georgia decided things needed to change. Their opportunity came in October 2012, when one Bidzina Ivanishvili, a Georgian billionaire, challenged the ruling party, the United National Movement, led by the country's president, Mikhail Saakashvili. It just so happened that Ivanishvili managed to gather enough support to topple the government in power alongside his party, the Georgian dream. That inspiring story, however, took place 12 years ago, and nowadays, things are a little less dreamy in Georgia. It seems that in the current year, most news from Georgia that reached the international stage are of new, Kremlin-like legislation that the Georgian dream is trying to adopt into law. The most striking example of this is the foreign agent law, passed this May after Parliament overrode a presidential veto. According to the law, all organizations, including media outlets and NGOs that received at least 20% of their funding from abroad will be given the title of foreign agents, forcing them to submit financial reports straight to the government. Coincidentally, Russia passed that same law in 2012. It is quite obvious that this act will be used to oppress the dissidents and all those who do not agree with the incumbent powers. I do hope and wish the people of Georgia will protect their independence and their dignity, because it is obvious this act will be used to further strengthen the authoritarian government by closing media outlets and NGOs, forcing the active young and older people who do not agree with the actions of the authorities to leave the country. This is totally unacceptable. The current Georgian opposition aren't the only ones saying the ruling party is warming up to their giant neighbor. A certain billionaire, who still serves as the chairman of the party, also thinks fostering good relations with Russia is the best move. We will not be able to change Russia. It would be better for us to change ourselves. It would be better for us to work more on ourselves. We have to try to establish relations with Russia as it is. The most important thing for us is not to add our own mistakes to any mistakes that Russia may already be making in order not to aggravate our relationship. With EU officials increasingly frustrated over the way the Georgian dream chooses to govern its country, many believe that Tbilisi's efforts to join the bloc may be compromised if the ruling party stays in power for another term, making these parliamentary elections so important. Later this week, the people of Georgia will have to choose between their country siding with the West or the East, and most recent polls show that the battle for power will once again be hard fought for either side. Our guest today is Ketevan Kukava, a fellow of the Law and Public Policy Center in Georgia. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Um, up and coming elections, parliamentary elections in Georgia uh, in a few days' time. What are the. We've kind of heard about the, the tensions within the society. Could you kind of outline, outline the problems and the tensions and the potential conflicts that you see in in the run-up to the elections. Uh, thank you very much for your interest in this important topic. Uh, now Georgia is facing a defining moment. We are at the crossroads and the upcoming elections will determine whether Georgia will pursue its European and uh, democratic uh, future. Uh, and on the election day, uh, we are actually voting for our foreign policy direction. So that's why it is uh, very often called as a referendum about European integration. And uh, this makes this election a historic one and its outcome will uh, be a turning point for, for the future of Georgia. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention that historically Georgia has always been striving towards Europe. We, we belong to Europe, we belong to European family. And that's why this makes uh, uh, these uh, upcoming elections uh, very important. Uh, so recently, you know, we have witnessed uh, the decline of democracy in Georgia, the backsliding. And um, you know, despite uh, this fact, as you uh, might already know, in December 2023, Georgia was granted candidate status. And by this decision, European Union uh, 
uh, expressed uh, its and reaffirmed its commit its uh, support to the uh, Georgian population. So it was a decision addressed to the Georgian people who have demonstrated their willingness to join uh, the European Union and who have uh, um, expressed their unity and uh, uh, bravery. But at this moment, uh, uh, the uh, European accession process of Georgia uh, has been uh, suspended, which is because of the recent negative developments in Georgia. Uh, to uh, provide an example, uh, there was um, uh, the uh, adoption of the foreign agents law, which is uh, uh, officially called as the law on the transparency of foreign influence. However, it has nothing to do with transparency. Its aim is to stigmatize civil society, to divide the society, to silence critical voices. Uh, and uh, it is uh, contrary to uh, democratic values and it uh, is not in compliance with international human rights standards. And it has also been uh, uh, confirmed by authoritative bodies such as Venice Commission or OSC uh, Office for Democratic Institutions and Human Rights. They have all mentioned that this law is uh, against uh, the democratic values and international human rights standards. And I mean, I can understand uh, at least a part of the society wanting to join the European uh, project. So an ancient Christian country, Christendom, all that stuff. But th there is a very... Um, Oh, there's also pro-Russian tradition in Georgian society, if I, as I understand it. Um, uh, uh, what I can say is that uh, around 80% of the Georgian population are pro-European, so they support uh, uh, European integration. So according to the po polls, this is a high number of the Georgian uh, people who actually uh, want to join the European Union. Uh, and even um, in our constitution, European aspirations are uh, guaranteed. So the, our European um, uh, aspirations is uh, enshrined in the supreme law of, the, of, of Georgia. Uh, so it has always been um, our historical uh, choice. Uh, but at this moment, we are facing uh, significant challenges uh, we, uh, because of these recent negative developments. As I have mentioned, uh, the uh, foreign agents law and the anti-Western rhetoric by the government of Georgia. And just one week ago, European Council uh, published uh, its conclusions in which it mentioned that it, uh, uh, the recent developments raise uh, serious concerns and this may makes the current European integration process uh, de facto suspended. So at this moment it is suspended. So the outcome of the elections will determine whether we will return to the European path or we will move uh, closer to Russia. So th that's why this election is, uh, is so important. So how do you account for the rather uh, convincing lead in the polls of the Georgian dream? Last one I saw was 59%. Uh, um, yeah. the, the opposition of the pro EU parties, 2%, 6%. How do you account for the... And, you, and then you say that, OK, the, um, the, there's a great groundswell of pro-EU uh, support for Georgia within the society itself, but how do you account for the, the strong support for the Georgian dream? Um, well, actually, there are some polls, but their credibility are quite uh, questionable. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say is that the number of supporters of the Georgian Dream has significantly decreased recently because of their anti-Western rhetoric, because of the uh, backsliding, uh, and uh, uh, there are mm, uh, and also there are uh, other uh, polls and surveys uh, which also highlight that the Georgian Dream at this moment does not have uh, uh, so much supporters in, uh, for. Uh, gaining the uh, majority. So, uh, and as I have mentioned, uh, around 80% of the Georgian population support European uh, integration. So this gives us hope that uh, uh, it will, of course, uh, affect the outcome of the um, uh, elections and uh, the Georgian citizens will vote for a um, uh, European future. Uh, how, uh, how, does the, how does the Georgian, how does Georgian society, if we can use a, a broad brush analysis, uh, respond to the EU uh, tardiness in uh, bringing Georgia into the EU. Um, uh, why is it so? Why does it take so? Why is it so slow? 
Uh, well, uh, at, at this moment, uh, the European integration process of Georgia is suspended, which is because of the um, uh, foreign agents law, because of the anti-Western uh, rhetoric by our current government, uh, and because of these recent developments, which are contrary to the values upon which the European Union is based. Because we know that European v Union is founded on uh, um, on the key values such as rule of law, human rights, uh, uh, democracy, uh, and in order to become the member of the European Union, the country should uh, should follow this, uh, these values and these standards. So it is uh, because of the uh, course of action taken by the current ruling party, uh, this uh, European integration process is suspended. But uh, as I have mentioned last week, there was a conclusion by the European Council which was published. And in this uh, uh, conclusion, the European Council reiterates that it supports Georgian people on their European path. However, the recent developments raise serious concerns and it is because of the course of action taken by the current government uh, which makes the European integration process uh, at this moment suspended. But after the elections, if the Georgian people will uh, uh, choose our European future and uh, uh, pro-Western opposition parties win, in this case, uh, we will continue, uh, of course, our path towards the uh, European Union. But what do you think would happen if they don't? Uh, it is uh, you know, very hard to predict what will be the uh, outcome of the uh, elections, but w what I, um, I have mentioned, the, uh, the support of the current government has significantly decreased, it, it declined. Uh, and uh, we know that 80% uh, you know, of the population support European Union. And just uh, three days ago, there was a pro-European rally in the streets of Tbilisi. A lot of people attended it. So uh, it is very hard to say exactly what will be the outcome after the elections. So uh, if uh, there is some uh, manipulation or some falsification, uh, there it is likely that the people will uh, take it to the streets again and there will be some protests. Uh, but um, uh, if the uh, opposition parties together win the uh, elections, in this case, it will be very important to defend this victory and to make sure that the choice of the Georgian people is respected. Uh, but we should be ready for uh, for any scenario. But uh, I I am uh, hopeful because of the uh, of um, our historical choice for for European Union because of the um, this 80 percent of population who support EU, and I am very hopeful for the uh, young people um, of Georgia who have been at the forefront of the protests in spring uh, this year as well as last year. They were born in, uh, um, uh, in independent Georgia and they, they, they have European values. So um, uh, this, uh, this gives me hope that um, um, ultimately our European, uh, the decision will be made uh, in favor of um, our European uh, future. Yes. Um, it's, a, it's a generational struggle. As, as I understand from what you say. Uh. Um, uh, it uh, it cannot be um, called a generational struggle because uh, among the older generations there are also mm -hmm. supporters for uh, European Union. But I highlighted uh, uh, the young people because they have uh, been at the forefront of these uh, uh, protests. Uh, so um, so yeah. Mm. Um, former President Shakashvili said that if the ruling party wins the upcoming elections, independent Georgia will cease to exist. Is that an alarmist? Um, uh, look, at, look at things, or uh, yeah. is Georgia really on? We've seen we've seen these street demonstrations before, very, very brutally put down. Is there a danger of that escalating? Um, you know, as I have mentioned at this moment, we are at the crossroads. So at these elections, we uh, we are making uh, a choice between democracy and authoritarianism, and this will um, determine whether we are moving closer to the West uh, or we are distancing uh, distancing from them. So uh, it it is uh, uh, very hard to say how how these things will uh, turn out after after the elections. Uh, but if uh, the current ruling party stays uh, in power. In this case, uh, um, our European integration process will be will be stopped, and we will be distanced from uh, from the Western uh, democracies, and we we will move closer to Russia, which of course will be a uh, very uh, negative uh, consequence for the Georgian citizens. I mean, many countries would probably be be much happier if you could tow them away and tow them all, all the way, and park them off Paris, for example. But you can't. Uh, Georgia is where it is on the map where it is and historically it's got Russia as a, as a very troublesome shall we say neighbor 
that's not going to end, is it? The, whatever, whatever is the uh, ver the um, verdict of the electorate. Um, yeah, so after the elections, mm -hmm. if we, uh, if the uh, pro-Western opposition parties win and we will return to our European path, then there will be um, some comprehensive uh, reforms uh, um, in Georgia in order to be uh, to align our legal system with the European Union, and we will mo move closer to uh, to the Western uh, world, and we will move closer to the values upon which the uh, European Union is um, uh, based. Uh, so. This uh, we, we during uh, yeah, in the in the recent uh, years um, and for four decades we have uh, uh, felt the support from the uh, Western democracies. They are supporting our independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and uh, uh, this gives us hope that this international support uh, will help us to overcome this crisis and uh, uh, move uh, towards uh, Europe and uh, to move towards democratic uh, future. Well, hope that your faith in Western, uh, the Western powers is, is justified. Uh, Ketevan Kukava, thank you very much for coming on to our programme. Thank you very much. That's all we have time for today. Uh, do join us next time for How We Got Here.